Welcome to SQL Server 2016 Administration, Section 2, Login and User Security. In this section, we're going to take a look at SQL Server Security's overall architecture. We will cover SQL Server logins and database users. We will take a look at the built-in server roles as well as custom server roles. Analogously, we will look at the built-in database roles and custom database roles. And then we will take a look at object-level permissions. SQL Server 2016 Administration, Security Architecture. In this video, we're going to take a look at the overall security architecture of SQL Server, what it means to be secure by default, how encryption and CLR security are handled in SQL Server. The overall security architecture of SQL Server is designed to provide security through overlapping layers that prevent unauthorized clients and unauthorized access to data. It does this by ensuring that all of the clients that connect to SQL Server are authenticated in some way. Once they're authenticated, however, clients must be authorized to perform some action or access of resource. The level of access is handled through a hierarchy that is based on the object relations with each other and permissions that are granted explicitly. Data can also be encrypted separately from the authorization that clients are granted, and external code written using SQL CLR can be secured. Let's look at each one of these in a little more detail. Authentication means that a client is actually identified for the purposes of understanding who is connecting to this server. SQL Server does this in two different ways. It allows for Windows authentication, which uses your Active Directory and Windows local users and groups to provide a login authentication method, relying on Windows to actually authenticate the user. SQL Server also can handle its own authentication through what's called SQL Server authentication. In this method, SQL Server stores the authentication tokens, whether that be a certificate or a password, inside of the server and uses that to determine who is connecting. Once a user is connected, however, they must be authorized to perform actions. By default, no user is granted any rights to perform actions. This is the SQL Server principle of being secure by default. We also covered some of this in the installation where SQL Server does not open the firewall, does not run the SQL Server browser, and other items to pr protect SQL Server. The principle of leave privilege is said that we should only grant the least amount of privileges or rights that a user needs to perform some action. In general, it is best to adhere to this principle when you are granting rights. Do not grant server administration rights, database owner rights, or other high-level privileges when they are not needed for your application or for the user. We actually can assign rights and permissions in two ways. One is through roles at either the server level or the database level. The other is through individual permission statements. In the last bullet, I note that ownership chains can confuse the issue. That is certainly true. But ownership chains do adhere to the same principles. Somebody must have granted rights at some point to a user to access an item. An ownership chain merely allows them to access related items that are, might be under the same ownership or the same level of privilege. SQL Server also provides a number of encryption mechanisms. There's transparent data encryption, always encrypted, and column level encryption functions. In addition, SQL Server can encrypt the communications to and from the server. Each of these will be covered in a later module in more detail. SQL CLR security is somewhat outside the scope of this module in this course, but understand that SQL CLR is protected in SQL Server. The SQL CLR system allows a developer to write custom.net code that can be used as a stored procedure or a function or a type, and then this can be executed inside of SQL Server. The code access security model is used, which is the same model that .NET adheres to. There are a number of requirements and restrictions. Please check Microsoft's MSDN site for those items if you decide to implement SQL CLR. A full coverage of what SQL CLR security means is beyond the scope of this course. 